viewers welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Amparish and uh, in today's video I will be presenting some of my original research and along with uh, another uh, beautiful problem from Pathfinder challenge your understanding problem 1 from electromagnetic induction so without much ado let's uh, have a look at the problem and I am going to solve this problem using my own method I have generalized Thevenin's theorem uh, for application with uh, circuits containing only batteries and inductors or uh, circuits containing only batteries and capacitors as the driver circuit and I will also be telling you the intuitive reasoning or rather uh, a bit uh, mathematical logic also why that works ok so without much ado let's look at the problem here is the problem two ideal, induct two ideal inductors each of inductance L are connected in series and a capacitor of capacitance C is connected in parallel to one of the inductors so this inductor has inductance L this inductor has inductance L and this has got capacitance C ok this combination is connected across a battery of electromotive force E so this has got an electro EMF of E through a switch initially the switch was open for a long time and the capacitor was uncharged how will the voltage and the capacitor vary with time t after the switch is closed so if you want you can give it a try i'll present my analysis right away okay here we go so i'm going to solve it using two methods and uh, just for your satisfaction that uh, my method gives the right answer as well okay so what are the two methods first is the Ambrish generalization of Thevenin for inductors and capacitors ok and the second method is the conventional method by using KVL or uh, Kirchhoff's junction law so let's see now uh, let's try to see why that we can apply Thevenin here using inductors so I am going to compare two circuits so what do we do in this kind of a circuit we Thevenize the capacitor that is we pluck out the capacitor and then we see what is the open circuit voltage across this and uh, then uh, that we call as E Thevenin and then uh, we look back into the circuit and see what is uh, after shorting the batteries if you remember the standard procedure uh, for Thevenizing it so that we call as the effective resistance ok so now what was the logic behind uh, uh, the Thevenin's theorem if you uh, remember the proof uh, I will also be giving the link of the proof of Thevenin's theorem that I had done long ago so Thevenin's theorem itself was based on superposition theorem and superposition theorem was in turn based on the linearity of the circuits that is the currents in the circuits were just uh, in a circuit containing only resistors and batteries was just a linear combination of uh, the resistors and the batteries ok so that was the basis of the superposition theorem and then using superposition theorem we had proved the Thevenin's theorem ok so now it turns out even in the inductor circuits there is a kind of linearity but the instead of the current variable the corresponding variable is i dot you see the potential drop in a resistor is i r whereas a potential drop in an inductor is i dot into l where i dot represents the rate of change of current right so i dot can be thought of as just another uh, algebraic variable just like i is a variable we can think of i dot as another variable so if you have a circuit containing only inductors and batteries you will get a system of linear equations in i dot and uh, currents uh, I mean uh, the current the rate of change of current and the uh, inductances and the uh, batteries just like you get uh, linear equations for currents and resistors and batteries right just instead of i we will have in the that system of equations we will have i dot as the variable so linearity will be uh, ensured in the that kind of arrangement where, where we have uh, inductors and batteries only uh, and the corresponding variable which will follow the linear behavior is i dot ok and uh, so similarly suppose instead of uh, three resistors I had three inductors this inductor this inductor this inductor so we can see that potential drop in this will be uh, in this one it will be L into I1 dot in this it will be L into I2 dot and this will be L times I1 dot plus I2 dot so pretty similar kind of potential drops bus or the only th thing is that uh, the variable has changed from I to I dots ok so so let's look at this uh, uh, logic so recall that superposition principle and Thevenin's theorem is based only on linear nature of driven circuit that is driver circuit not driven circuit in fact driven circuit is need not just be capacitor driven circuit can be anything if you re recall in Thevenin's theorem this could be anything including a diode a transistor or it could con contain anything it could be any jamela of uh, all kinds of circuit elements resistors batteries uh, inductors uh, capacitors diodes transistors or whatever have you so everything can be there in the driven just the driver should be a linear circuit in the sense only batteries and resistors 
so similarly the linearity will be maintained driven can be anything the driver should contain only batteries and inductors or otherwise only batteries and capacitors so that can be thought of as the driver circuit and driven can in turn be anything so let me read this again recall that superposition principle and thevenin's theorem is based only on linear nature of the driver circuit that is if we remove the driven portion the capacitor here we get a system of linear equations in current i resistances and batteries similarly if we define a new variable as rate of change of currents that is i dot in the right circuit we will get a similar set of linear equations in i dot variables and inductances and batteries okay so thus by symmetry of mathematics we can infer that the right circuit can be similarly thevenized to produce identical i dot so since the variable here is i dot in which we are getting the linearity so correspondingly uh, we can think of uh, I, um, the, the the inductor and the battery circuit supplying as some i dot to the driven circuit and of course if there is some i dot you integrate that you get the i uh, in the driven circuit so uh, so this with respect to i dot this circuit is similar to the uh, thevenized resistor circuit where the variable corresponding variable was i okay so thevenized to produce the identical i dot in the driven circuit just as thevenizing an er circuit that is battery and resistor circuit the driver produces same i in the driven okay so thevenin equivalent produces the same current in the driven as the original circuit similarly thevenizing an inductor and battery circuit will produce the same i dot in the driven circuit okay by similar argument uh, uh, by the similar argument can also be made if the driver only has the batteries and capacitor let me uh, change the sentence structure uh, by the way i forgot to mention my dyslexia by the way by the way a similar argument can also be made if the driver has only batteries and capacitors and there will be talking about thevenin capacitance i hope you followed the general logic of why we can thevenize a circuit containing only batteries and inductors as the driver circuit okay so i'll also be giving you the proof um, the link to the proof video in the description box and i might also give that in the i button so watch out so here we shall try to find out equivalent thevenin voltage and thevenin inductance so this is our circuit so for finding the thevenin voltage what do you do you pluck out the capacitor and see what is the open circuit voltage across these two terminals so that will give you e thevenin and thevenin inductance similarly as we do in the case of resistor you just uh, replace the battery by a short circuit and then find the effective inductance between these two terminals so let's do that so for finding e thevenin we just pluck out the capacitor and find the open circuit voltage across the Uh, these two terminals and you can see if these are open circuit terminals then uh, this l and this l are look like simply in series so this potential drop is simply e by 2 so e thevenin simply becomes e by 2 okay so it can be readily seen from the figure that e thevenin is e by 2 okay now for calculating l thevenin we replace the battery by short circuit and find the effective uh, inductance across across the open terminals so if you take this as the open terminals then this l and this l become in parallel and then l and l in parallel become uh, l by 2 just like resistors uh, effective inductance in parallel behaves just like effective uh, resistance in parallel okay so this will become l and l in parallel becomes l by 2 okay so now using equations 1 and 2 we can draw simplified circuit so this is your equation 1 e thevenin we have found and l thevenin we have found and now we can draw simplified circuit so we just have one battery and one capacitor and then l by 2 now after this uh, if you can uh, use the analogy between a spring mass system and uh, the, the lc uh, lc circuit uh, you can directly write the answer to this one if you have that kind of practice why because the capacitor is nothing but equivalent to one upon spring constant or you can say spring constant equivalent is one by capacitance inductance is propo is uh, uh, corresponds to the mass of the spring mass damper system and e by 2 this battery corresponds to a constant force so is it is uh, something like a spring mass system released from the natural length position why because displacement is uh, analogous to the charge in the capacitor so initial charge is zero that means initial elongation in the spring is zero and there is some mean position that will be ce by 2 will be the mean charge and about that there will be symmetric oscillations so you need not even uh, write the differential equation you can just from your experience of spring mass damper system you can write Uh, the solution to this uh, question uh, because it's one of the standard phasor positions where the initial charge is started from the uh, from the negative extreme you can say with respect to the mean position okay so if you don't have that practice don't worry i'm going to take, may do it using the differential equation also but uh, that's another smart way of doing it okay so now it's a standard question we'll i'll just apply loop law here 
सो एल बाई टू एक्स डबल डॉट एक्स इज द चार्ज ऑन कैपेसिटर सो आई इज एक्स डॉट एंड डी आई बाई डी टी इज देन एक्स डबल डॉट राइट सो दैट्स वॉट आई डन एल बाई टू एक्स डबल डॉट प्लस एक्स बाई सी माइनस ई बाई टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड नाउ यू रीअरेंज दिस डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एंड यूज द इनिशियल कंडीशन आर टी इक्वल टू जीरो चार्ज इज जीरो एंड ऑफकोर्स द करेंट थ्रू द कैपेसिटर मस्ट ऑल्सो भी जीरो वाई बिकॉज इन इंडक्टर द करेंट कैन नॉट राइज ऑल ऑफ अ सर्टन अदरवाइज इनफिनिट ई एम एफ विल बी इन्फिनिटी सो करेंट इनिशियल इन दिस इंडक्टर इज जीरो सो थ्रू कैपेसिटर ऑल्सो इनिशियल करेंट इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो दिस करेंट ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी जीरो सो एक्स एंड एक्स डॉट बोथ आर जीरो ओके सो नाउ यू कैन Uh, this is the standard SHM differential equation with the initial conditions. Now you can uh, compare this with the uh, equation d square x by dt square is minus omega square x minus x naught. So at t equal to zero, uh, you know the value of uh, x and also x dot, and uh, you can do it. So x naught by comparison is CE by two, and omega by comparison is under root of two by LC. So standard solution is x plus x is equal to x naught plus a cos omega t plus five, and now you plug in the initial condition. So at t equal to zero. Uh, so this becomes a cos phi and x naught is c e by two, right? Uh, okay. Uh, x naught uh, we just found by comparison of this equation. So x naught is c by two and x is zero. Okay. And uh, you differentiate this uh, uh, this one. So what you'll get minus a omega sine omega t plus phi and you put t, so this becomes uh, minus a omega sine phi at t equal to zero and this is also zero. So solving seven and eight, we get a is equal to c e by two and phi is equal to pi. Substitute this, and this is your charge as a function of time. And you have to find out the potential difference as a function of time. So what do you do? You just divide this by capacitance. So charge upon capacitance gives you the potential difference, and this is the answer. So this is the this answer matches with the answer given at the back of the book. So our method works. And uh, now to have even uh, more faith in this method, uh, let me do it. using the conventional ideas that you uh, are aware of so what uh, i do in the second method i'll be i'll be using the junction law and the node voltage method so let's say the potential of this node is zero so this node potential becomes e and let's say this node potential is v of course v will be varying with time okay and now uh, uh, i'll write the equation for potential drop across various elements and we'll see what we get so here the potential drop is e minus v this is e this is v so e minus v should be equal to uh, l di by dt and here the current is x plus y so it becomes l x dot plus y dot dot means time derivative so e minus v is l x dot plus y dot and similarly potential drop across this is v minus 0 and that should be l y dot that's what i have written v is equal to l y dot and for here you see the voltage on this is x upon c right c uh, q is equal to cv so x is cv right so what is x dot current through this uh, so that will be cv dot right so cv dot is current okay uh, x is not the charge so, sorry x itself was the current and charge is cv so current is cv dot okay so that's what i have written Ch current is cv dot now what do i do see i have x dot y dot here there is a y dot here if i differentiate l11 with respect to time i'll get an x dot over here multiply that by l you will get lx dot and then you can subtract to eliminate x dot and y dot from equations 9 10 and 11 so what do you do Uh, take equation nine, subtract equation ten. So L Y dot will get finished, and then take the derivative of eleven and multiply it by L. So L into eleven dot, and then simplify the equation. You get E minus two V minus L C V double dot. Here, if if you take a dot, this will become C V double dot is equal to zero, and then you rearrange this differential equation. You get D square V by D T square is minus two by L C V minus E by two. Once again, it's a standard differential equation. and we know that initially the capacitor is uncharged so initial potential drop across capacitor is zero also initial current through the capacitor is zero so, so same initial condition cv dot is zero or v dot of zero is also zero now 13 14 15 again form the same uh, shm differential equation set and uh, we can directly uh, solve this and get the result and we get the same result using this also vt is e by 2 into 1 minus cos omega t where omega is under root of 2 by lc so that completes my analysis of the problem i hope you enjoyed uh, uh, this uh, problem and uh, particularly you enjoyed my generalization of thevenin's theorem uh, where you have uh, only the batteries and inductors in the dri driver circuit or only the batteries and capacitors in the driver circuit and uh, i hope that this video was useful for you and if you did find this video useful please do give a thumbs up to my video 
and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with them and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and yes most importantly if you have al not already subscribed to my channel please do remember to subscribe to my channel so because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video for you frequently okay so thank you and i'll see you in the next video and as always god bless you all thank you